So what do you think of today then? I think that's a good haul. Yeah. Very yeah, good. I think so, yes. Hey guys, uh, out and about again. On our way back from seeing my parents for uh, Christmas, for Boxing Day even. I forgot which day it was. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> but we've had a nice uh, time out seeing family, it's been great. But now we're heading back home, but we decided we would stop off in Bishop Auckland. I almost forgot where we were there. As you can tell, I'm uh, exhausted. And uh, we've had a good day. I picked up a few more games for the collection, say a few more. <laughs> a fair amount, actually. It's quite substantial. I'm carrying it all in a massive bag. So, we're doing alright with the collection wise. Uh, and uh, it's been nice to see family. So good. And <laughs> it's been a whirlwind uh, the last few days seeing uh, Jen's family, seeing my family, and just having a lovely time. A bit of time off away from work as well, which I've needed because. I've been overworked, but as you would know, for three weeks I didn't have the time to do a vlog because of the work. So I'm very happy. <sighs> but falling asleep on my feet. So we're going to head home now. So let's go. So this is a tenner for the books. We've come out to Locomotion, the Children Model Railway Museum, not Model Railway, Children Railway Museum. And uh, Jen likes to visit and uh, I like to make her happy. But uh, as an added bonus, Tim Peake's spaceship is here. The, the lander that uh, brought him back to Earth from space. So let's go and have a look at that too. Oh, I'm very pleased with this. This is a good surprise. Oh my goodness. It's very much like a diving bell. It is. It's similar technology, isn't it? Oh, it must be like jets for like thrusters for orientating. Yeah, reorientation. I presume it make sure they land in the right place. Cause you... Oh man! That must be where like the parachutes are stored before they it, they'll be explosive bolts. Yeah. So as it comes to the point where it needs to deploy the parachutes, they go bang, blow out the panel, and the parachutes deploy. Wow! Look at look at the message inside. Man inside. No. That's presumably if the first people to get to it are like local fishermen or something. Yeah, yeah. and instructions on how to open it. Oh my goodness, they thought of everything. Russian and English. Wow. But look, look, it's got like little binders for all the different paper that they might need. Yeah, it's got a manual and it's got all the controls. This is amazing. <laughs> Well, you imagine just you can see how big it is there compared to what it is inside the rocket. Gives you an idea of the scale of the, the rockets. It's presumably uh, one crew goes up and then they trade people coming back. Mm. Is that all? Only. Well, yeah. Four hours in that as it hurtles through the atmosphere is probably quite That's enough. Scary, yeah. <laughs> Are you happy? I've, I've done my token silly for the day, come on then. Hey guys, right, we're finally back from uh, the long trip back from uh, the northeast where we stopped off at the Science uh, Museum exhibit at the Locomotion National Railway Museum to see Tim Peake's Sawyer's capsule. And you know what? That was brilliant. It absolutely made my day that. It was so good. So I picked up a couple of things from there. I picked up, where is it? The mission patch that they had as a souvenir. And of course, 
a photograph of the inside of the capsule. I'm going to frame this and on either side of it, on uh, our cool wall up going up the staircase where we've got a lot of uh, fun family pictures, we're going to have the photos that I took of myself and Jennifer with the capsule. So I think that'll be a, a nice little piece because, oh man, to see something that's actually been in space and returned is fantastic. But we're, while we're up there, the reason that we were nearby to the uh, local motion railway museum is we decided to have another pop to a CEX and see if we had any cheap games to pick up there. And there were some good cheap games. So picked up uh, T Rock 2 in the, the black N64 uh, part. So I was very happy to pick that up. But I got a lot of PlayStation 2 and Xbox to add to the collection now. And if this is your first time watching one of these vlogs, I'm going to say this, uh, but uh, everyone else already knows this. I'm attempting to get a 100% complete collection of all of the games for the PlayStation 2 that were released in the UK. And I'm also trying to get all of the exclusive titles, exclusive to the Xbox, original Xbox, that were released in the UK. And on both, I'm being pretty successful so far, are uh, 62 2.39% I believe I'm on for the PlayStation 2 set. We're out of 2,300 odd uh, games. Can't remember exactly how many games there are. And of the 100 or so Xbox original games, we've got about 45% so far. Now that doesn't include everything that we've got here. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the Xbox ones because why not? First of all, picked up New Legends. Now I don't know much about New Legends, but I do know that it was a commercial failure. So finding a copy is getting quite tricky. But I've got one here, and it's in reasonable condition, except that it's been branded there, and it's been branded on the side. Someone's put that off. It came from Granger Games originally, so I've just had to pull a Granger Games sticker off there. The Granger Games are, or at least were during this era, the worst uh, group of people to get games from, because they would stick stickers on everything. I've had stickers for Granger Games on the CD, so that's one of those things where you know, you just look at it and think, how could you think this is a good idea? It unbalances the disc and you can't get them off very easily. So it's very, very problematic because it unbalances the disc, which means that if you play it and it's unbalanced too much, your drive will get damaged. So I don't like Ranger games. But let's move on after that rant. Next one up, we've got Far Cry Instincts Evolution. Now I have Far Cry Instincts. I A completely new single player campaign. That's good because uh, I was... Uh, worried that it was just basically just an, like an add-on pack for the original because it really did look like that from the, the screenshots on the back but hey Far Cry Instincts was pretty good so I'm very happy with that. Now this next one when I looked at it I thought what is that is that an exclusive or is it not because what I actually do my technique of going to these places is to pull out, pull out every single game I don't recognize on the shelves and then check on my list. I have a list on my phone it's just a little spreadsheet and I go through it with my list of games. I have a list of games and I don't know whether it's going to focus on that or not but it tells me which ones I've got and which ones I haven't. So I go through my list and check all the games I didn't recognise and I'll have another look on the shelves in case there's anything else. But that's how I do it and I pulled this out thinking is this a, an exclusive or not and then I realised that it said only on Xbox so <laughs> well that was a bit of a mess. So Rally Sport uh, to, well, sorry, Rally Sport Challenge 2. I love my racing games, I think Rally especially. Out of all racing, Rally is my favourite. So I'm very happy to have that. But uh, one that I've also been looking for for a long time, and this is a big one. Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Academy. The Jedi Knight games on pretty much every format. Uh, I've got one up there, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast on GameCube. This is the exclusive one only available on the Xbox. So I've been trying to hunt this down. It's in reasonable condition. It looks like a fun game. And it's all here, all complete, in decent condition. So I'm very f happy to say my hunt is finally over and now I may have pretty much all the Star Wars games for that era. And I'll show you why in a minute. Now we've got uh, another one, NBA Inside Drive 2002. Microsoft had their own sports series basically to try and compete with everyone else. And it looks pretty good. I don't know whether it's any good, but it looks pretty good. And that's all here, so I'm very happy. Which means I've uh, gone some way of getting those now. There is another one still to get. Speaking of ones where they still want to get, Sega GT Online. I already have Sega GT 2002, I think it is, because it's one that came with uh, the original Xbox along the same disc as... What was the name of the game? 
Jet Set Radio Future. Yeah, Jet Set Radio Future and Sega GT were on the same disc for the Xbox, packaged in it. You didn't get a box, you just got the disc in a little uh, paper and plastic sleeve. And I played Sega GT 2002 a lot. Didn't play Jet Set Radio Future much because I didn't like it. Sorry, DJ Slope, I didn't get on with that game. But then again, I even came to that after having played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. So, yeah, well, if it had been the other way around, probably would have liked it. An awful lot more than I do. But here we are, it's all here, and like I said, it's very decent condition, so I'm very happy with that. I'm going to be playing that a fair amount, I think. Now, here's one that I didn't even know about, and it's, the only reason I picked this up is because I didn't recognise the title, and as per my usual game selection rules, you pull them off the shelf, put them into a pile, and then go through the pile to check whether you need it or not. Shattered Union. It doesn't mark itself as an Xbox exclusive. Now, that's something to watch out for. If you're going for a complete set of the exclusives on any any uh, format, you've got to make sure you know what they are, because they won't always tell you. Nintendo are pretty good at saying only on X, Y, and Z. Xbox are reasonably good at having these stickers that say only on Xbox. But there are some games that are announced on multiple formats which, for some reason, don't come out on the other format. So you end up, like this one, where you've got a game that isn't originally designed as an exclusive but becomes an exclusive because the other versions don't get released. Or at least don't get released in this area. So there we are, Shattered Union. Doesn't mark itself as an, ex as an exclusive, but is. And it's in really good condition as well, so I am very happy with that. I'm going to be playing that a bit. I don't know what it is. Um, hmm. It appears to be a tactical game. I wonder whether it's an RTS or something like that. I don't know, but uh, we'll give it a try. And last but not least, the reason why I'm saying I've probably got all the Star Wars games now. Star Wars Knighted Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. The less good version of uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I have the original, I have both of these games on PC, but now I have them on Xbox as well. And, yeah, I've never managed to get my way through this game. Loved the first one, absolutely loved it. Played it to death in a couple of days. I just sat there and just went through it. I never got on with this one, because I played Light Side Female, which apparently it wasn't designed for. Basically, they didn't have time to finish the storyline, so Light Side didn't get its proper ending. It didn't get a lot of its uh, options. And if you play female, well, they made the male versions first because most of their target audience was men who would want to play as men. So they focused on getting certain things done. And apparently if you play Dark Side Male, it's a pretty decent game. So I may end up doing that. But that means I'm restricted on my options just to get the decency out of the game, which I don't like in an RPG. That gives you a character generation. But enough enough said about that, the better, because I will do a review at some point. <laughs> you can count on that one. Right, let's move on to PS2. We've got a fair few of these, so let's get straight into it. These are in no particular order, because I haven't had a look through. So let's get on with it. First one is Superbike Riding Challenge, which I thought I already had, but thank you to the list, because I then realised I didn't. It's in pretty good condition on the case. No manual, though, sadly. We did alright with manuals on the Xbox, but not on this one. Next up we have one that I was sure I had, but apparently I don't. PDC World Championship Darts 2008. Apparently, just don't have it. So, everything's here though. And someone... No, they haven't. I thought that was a, someone that stuck a sticker on it, but they haven't. The case is well used, my goodness. Either that's uh, been swapped out for a different uh, case, or someone has played this to death, which means it might be a pretty decent game. Not a big fan of darts games, I have to admit, but we'll see how we go. This one, it just looks weird. Sega Soccer Slam. Look at the people. It's like deformed caricatures. But uh, I really like Mario Strikers on the Wii, so hopefully this will be pretty good. But it's in really good condition. And everything's here. So I'm very happy. Uh, is that bum for a sticker? Nope. It's still got the uh, registration card at the back. For Infogrames United Kingdom. What? Infogrames weren't involved with Sega, surely. No, oh, they were distributed by Infograms. I've heard a lot of people call Infograms Infograms. I don't think it is. I think it's Amphogram because it's French. But, oh well. This one, Jen picked out. She she spotted this one. And I... It looks to me like it's a re-release, but I'm not entirely sure. Maxed Out Racing. If you look at the screenshot, you see it looks like PS1 era. So... 
I don't know. I think it's one of those... What is it? Oh! Uh, 2003 and it's released by Midas. So yeah, it's probably... It's probably a re-release of a Japanese PS1 game or something like that. They did import an awful lot. Or maybe it's just like really low quality. Now this one is the reason that we went to uh, Bishop Auckland CEX today. We had a look on... When we're going somewhere, we have a look at the, the list of what they've got available on the website. And this was on there. It's one that doesn't turn up an awful lot. It appears to be reasonably uh, hard to get and doesn't hang around very long. So it's Metropolis Mania 2. And it appears to be some sort of SimCity game. The case looks a little bit wobbly on the front. It's like the plastic's wobbling. It's got a few marks on it. And I can tell from the weight that, yeah, there's no manual. But we have the game. So, looks like it's a fairly late release as well, my goodness. It's a late release one. Uh, when's it from? Yeah, 2008. So it's later in the PS PS2's run, so that should be interesting. Now this one is one I've been looking at for a few weeks now, trying to get a copy, because I think it'll be an oddity. I don't really know much about it, but it looks quite interesting from what I've seen. Sword of the Samurai. Nice, nice condition, but again, no manual, so hopefully it doesn't require looking up an awful lot of information. Right, if uh, you've watched my Game Hammer show on the Nano Mouse channel, link in the description, then you will know that I like my old 8-bit systems, specifically the Amstrad CPC. And on that uh, Amstrad CPC, I had a game where you use a secret agent to try and blow up another secret agent. And it's based on a comic from Mad Magazine. Well, given that, when I heard that they had a copy of Spy vs. Spy on the PlayStation 2, I had to have it. It looks like a brilliant revamp of the CPC game that I loved. And I think it might have been an arcade game originally on the, the original 8-bit version, but this looks so good. So I'm really looking forward to playing this. And thankfully, it's all here in good condition. So I'm really, really happy with this. Oh man, I am looking forward to giving that a game. Next up we have one that... I thought I already had all of these, but... Showdown Legends of Wrestling. So is this Legends of Wrestling 3? Because I have 1 and 2. The case, as you can see, is damaged. But to get it, when you don't see it turn up an awful lot, is actually quite significant. So I'm very happy. I have an issue with wrestling games, I have to admit. It's all here, by the way, in decent condition. Because I like my one-on-one -on -one fighters. I like brawling games. I like 3D fighting games. They're actually quite interesting and, and a, a good multiplayer thing. But I have never, and I mean never, seen a decently rendered, decently playable, properly handled wrestling game. You'd have thought, surely, fighting games have wrestling characters in them, and they do, and they do them quite well. But wrestling games on their own have never managed to capture the spirit of a fighter the way that a one-on-one -on -one fighting game has. So I don't get it. I don't understand why. I'd love to see a wrestling game that actually takes the spirit of something like uh, Tekken or Dead or Alive or even Street Fighter and actually manages to link the two together so that you've got a game that's actually enjoyable. It's never happened. They go too close to representing what's on the TV to actually doing wrestling properly in my view. And it just, it's just one of those things. Now here's one that I was a bit disappointed to not be able to get earlier. I saw it uh, for sale one time and when we got to the CEX it wasn't there anymore. Because like Metropolis Mania, it's one of those that, yeah, it's not brilliant. It was a budget title when it came out. It's not well known or well regarded, but whenever it comes up it disappears. And that's my street. I don't know much about it. It appears to be mini games. And I don't know much about it, but every time it turns off, it disappears very quickly. So, despite the fact that all it's got inside is a leaflet about PlayStation Magazine, uh, at least we have a copy now. Yeah, Not great condition, but at least it's added to the collection, so I don't have to hunt for it anymore. Moving on, really good condition, this one. And again, it's a budget title, Crazy Golf uh, World Tour. Really nice condition, I'm, li I'm liking that. And everything's here. So very, very happy there. Oh my goodness, we're getting through these now. So it's a golf game. It doesn't look like a brilliant golf game. And uh, I'll probably end up sticking with Tiger Woods because I like my Tiger Woods games. But uh, 
Let's get charged at the collection. Oh, I'm exhausting myself here. Right, almost at the end now. Whiplash. I love the cover for this game. I mean, look at that. That is just ridiculous. What on earth is going on? Oh, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's based on a TV show or a film or whatever, but it looks insane. It looks really cool, and I'm really, really happy to have it, and I'm going to look forward to playing it. I think we've had a copy of this in the past, and it didn't work because I recognised the cover. But yeah, all here in decent condition, except someone stuck a sticker on the back of the manual. I'll probably try and get that off later on. But yeah, very, very happy with that. And then, finally, the game that I really, really wanted. Now, there were two of this franchise listed last night on CEX's website. No, listed yesterday afternoon on CX's website. When I checked it on the night, there was only one left. So I was really worried that we wouldn't be able to pick this up because I really want to play it. So I was glad for that when we got there, the final uh, game in that set was still there because, like I said, there were two and then there were one. And it's our type final. Yeah. Very, very happy to have this. Looks in reasonable condition. And... No manual, unfortunately, but we do have the game, and I am looking forward to giving this a try. Wow. They don't really go in for telling you much about the game. They just list the scores that it's reviewed on. That's how confident they are with this game. I love R-Type. The original game is brilliant. Even the really bad CPC port was all right, but the CPC 128K remake... Oh, oh, so good. So, I'm very happy to finally have it, and I'm going to go and play it now. I'll see you later. And that's it, guys. I've come down with a, a rather bad cold. It's hit quite quickly as well, as you can probably tell from my voice. So, that's going to be it for today's vlog. I'm sorry. I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll be better. Today's video is brought to you by my graphic novels, The Collected Life of Naughty Mouse, Volume 1. All Over the House, Volume 1, and All Over the House, Volume 2. Thank you.